Thank you for joining us today at West Los Angeles United Methodist Church. Please join me for the responsive call to worship and opening prayer. Holy God, we gather together to worship in your blessed presence within the peace and security of your sanctuary. We join with all creation in worshiping our glorious God. As we gather, we acknowledge that this beloved sanctuary is only a sign and symbol of your eternally abiding presence. We give thanks that these signs and symbols speak to us of the priority we are called to give to spiritual and godly values. We praise and give thanks to God that as we worship before our God, we are strengthened and enabled to live in God's world. As we come to worship our God, we accept that our path in life has not always been trouble-free, but we give thanks that in God's presence we may find our true home and blessed peace. Amen. Let us pray together. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. We long to be where you are, to stand in your very presence, and to behold you face to face. And so we have come to this place today. We have gathered together to worship you, to offer the praise which belongs to you alone. Bless us as we worship you together, and as we open our hearts and minds to your presence among us. For you alone are God, the one in whom we trust. Amen. Hello, and welcome to all the children who are joining us for worship. Today, I'm going to need your help with having you move your arms a little bit as I share with you some of the places and some of the ways that we can praise God. Some people like to walk out in nature where they can see all of God's glorious creation and praise God for it. Others like to find a quiet place in a room where they can open their Bibles and give God thanks for God's holy word. Others like to kneel in front of their bed at night, 
putting their hands together to give God thanks and praise for all the goodness in this world. Each of these places and ways are wonderful ways to praise God. But there's one way that I think surpasses all the others. And that's when we can gather all together in God's sacred place, like our sanctuary, to worship God with singing and prayer and praise to God. In our Bibles, in Psalm 84, the author understands this importance of coming together in God's holy place, God's sanctuary, to praise and worship God. The author writes these words, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. That is, God's sanctuary, God's temple, God's sacred space. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Happy are those who live in your house, who live and sing and praise in your sanctuary, ever singing your praise. Today, we are reopening our sanctuary for worship. And we look forward to having everyone come together to sing, pray, and praise God. We especially look forward to the time when all of us, all of you who are watching today, can come together in this beautiful sanctuary to lift our voices in song and prayer and praise to God. We look forward to that time when all of us can praise God together in one voice. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we bow our heads to give you thanks for our family, our friends, and this wonderful church. We are grateful when we can come together to sing, pray, and praise your holy name. We give thanks to you for this beautiful sanctuary and look forward to a time when it will be filled with all of your people once again. Gracious God, thank you for all the goodness in this world and for this place where we praise you. For we pray this in your Son's name. Amen. Amen. We give God thanks for God's holy place, our sanctuary, to worship God. Yes. 
A reading from Psalm 84, beginning with the first verse. Listen for the word of God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it to a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, uh, meaning Sunday, August the 15th, our church will be open for in-person worship for the first time in 16 months. It is a cause for rejoicing for celebration. But some people have questioned why. Why now? The pandemic, uh, due to the Delta variant, is surging, not decreasing. Well, I believe most of our members have been vaccinated. Not everyone has, especially our children. And uh, to be honest, Some people have fallen out of the habit of coming to church. They have been comfortable doing church uh, this way, online, where they can uh, worship at any time, coffee cup in hand and slippers on their feet. Why go to church for worship? After all, it takes effort to go to church. You have to get up early, And on a Sunday, uh, no less, it means putting on nice clothes, getting the kids ready. For those of us who are introverts, it means being sociable around people. And some have to get in their car and drive, sometimes for 30 or 40 minutes. Why go through the bother? Well, 
For some, going to church is a chance to see friends. In this time of increased tribalism, it is comforting uh, to be around people who see the world as you do. For others, church going is an ingrained habit, starting when they were an infant or youth or newlywed or parent, and continuing until the interruption of the pandemic. But are these the only reasons why we go to church? In today's reading, the psalmist cannot wait to get to the church. The church, in this case, was the temple in Jerusalem. The occasion is one of the three great festivals that all Jews were expected to attend. But there is no sense of obligation on the part of the psalmist. Rather, he or she simply yearns to be back on the temple grounds. The psalmist writes, My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. The language is that of a, of a lover for their beloved. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. The writer is even envious or jealous of the birds that have been able to build nests in the nooks and crannies of the temple grounds. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my sovereign and my God. Why is the writer so passionate about returning to the temple? It may be because the writer finds in God a source of strength. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Zion here refers to Jerusalem, the city where the temple may be found. The writer appears to be saying, happy are those whose hearts continually long to be at the temple or the church. It also may be because the psalmist believes those who are passionate about the church give and receive blessings. He or she writes, as they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. The valley of Baca refers to the dry desert the pilgrims must cross on their way to the temple in Jerusalem. Because of their longing, they make the passage through the dry and arid places pleasant even enjoyable for others on the journey. And because of their passion, God blesses them with early rains. But while the writer expresses his or her passion for the temple in Jerusalem, they do not explain why. Why is it essential to make the pilgrimage to the temple or church? What difference does a place make? Could it be because the immortal and invisible God is made known through the things of this world? Not that God is the same as a thing. That would be idolatry. But material things can point us to God. By all accounts, the original temple in Jerusalem, built by King Solomon, was a magnificent place, grand in scale, with bronze pillars, golden lampstands, and sacrificial altars. If you were a shepherd from a remote village, you would be in awe when you entered the temple grounds. You would say, this must be 
the very house of God. Now, we don't believe God resides in one house or temple. God's presence fills the universe and may be found both inside and outside houses of worship. And some people meet God on a lake with a fishing pole in hand. Jesus said, a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. God is beyond place. But is there something unique about the temple or church, the place that is worthy of our pilgrimage, of making the effort to be there on a regular basis? If God is made known through the things of this world, perhaps the material things of the church can help us see through to God in a deeper, more profound way. For example, the bread and the juice we serve at at communion can remind us of the sacrifice of Christ. The baptismal font reminds us of the grace that cleanses us and accepts us as we are. The altar expresses our desire to give back to God. Fred Craddock said the altar is the oldest piece of furniture in the world. The church, the place itself, connects us with God in a unique way. A guest essay appeared recently in the New York Times entitled, What We Lose When We Live Stream Church. It was written by Colin Hansen, who has co-authored the book, Rediscover Church, Why the Body of Christ is Essential. In his essay, Hansen describes how Since the global pandemic closed many places of worship, many Christians have skipped church life, even neglecting virtual services. But Hansen believes that a Christian without a church is a Christian in trouble. He writes, Christians need to hear the babies crying in church. They need to see the reddened eyes of a friend across the aisle. They need to chat with a recovering drug addict who shows up early but still sits in the back row. They need to taste the bread and wine. My daughter needs to know the church members, even if it means wearing masks and setting up lawn chairs in a parking deck. Hansen believes that the body of Christ or church isn't the same when you separate its members. The word we translate from Greek as church in the New Testament means assembly. The hands and feet and ears and eyes need to be assembled for this body to work for the good of all. When we resume in-person worship today, We will be wearing masks, sitting apart, and listening to recorded music. But we will be together. And perhaps that is why we go to church. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, whose dwelling is in our hearts, we give you thanks for the church, your body here on earth. We thank you for those past and present who built this church, that generations may gather to worship you. We thank you for gathering us again as a body 
that we may resume being your hands and feet in the world. We pray for relief from the global pandemic. Because of it, the skies are filled with cries of pain and grief. We pray for doctors and nurses and teachers and students and all who are still burdened by the prolonged plague. And we pray for the people of other nations who have yet to receive the vaccines. May our affluence not be the cause of their sickness and death. We praise you as our sovereign God, the creator of all the nations and peoples of the world. We praise you as a loving God who hears the cries and knows the sufferings of every person. We praise you as a forgiving God who wants nothing more than to every person and thing to know abundant life. We praise you for Jesus who revealed your true nature. It is in his holy name we pray. Amen. We continue in prayer by praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today, and please have a good week, and please plan to join us again next week. Go now in peace, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.